Welcome to Greece Travel Guide. Get ready to be swept away to the captivating island of Paros, where we spent two unforgettable weeks in the summer of 2022. We're thrilled to take you on our journey and share with you some of the most memorable moments of our trip, from where to stay, to the must-visit destinations, and insider tips to make the most of your time on this enchanting Greek island. We've got you covered, so sit back, relax, and join us as we embark on this exciting adventure together. Before we dive into exploring Paros itself, let's quickly cover how you can get to this amazing Greek island. Visitors from outside Europe typically arrive in Greece via Athens International Airport. From here, the most direct route to Paros is an internal flight. These take just 40 minutes and cost around £100 depending on the time of year. A slightly cheaper alternative is taking a ferry from the main port of Piraeus. Fast ferries take around three hours, while conventional vehicle ferries will get you there in a little over four hours at a slightly lower cost, with average ticket prices ranging from 40 to 70 euros. However, you'll need to factor in roughly one hour to get from the airport to the port and, depending on your flight arrival time, you may even have to overnight on the mainland and catch a ferry the following morning. If you're planning to see Athens during your time in Greece, we recommend doing this at the end of your vacation when you'll be less jet-lagged and more relaxed. It also means you'll be back on the mainland well ahead of your flight home, avoiding any potential travel disruptions getting back from the island. Finally, if you're travelling to Greece from within Europe, there are direct international flights to the nearby islands of Mykonos and Santorini, Mykonos being the closest, and from there you can take a short ferry across to Paros. We chose to stay in the port town of Parakia, the island's capital, for its wide range of accommodation, great selection of tavernas, cafes and bars, and easy access to local sandy beaches. It's also where you'll find the main bus station on the island. From here you can access most other resorts without needing to hire your own transportation. Bus ticket prices range from €1.80 to €4 Euros each way depending on your destination. Tickets should be purchased before you board, but bus drivers will often sell you a ticket if you don't have one already. You can purchase a day bus pass for €10, Euros, but it's worth planning your itinerary and deciding if this will actually save you money before buying it. Despite visiting during the peak summer season, we didn't find Parakia too crowded, although the port area does get busy during ferry arrivals and departures. Walking along the narrow painted streets of Parakia, you'll find plenty of boutique shops, as well as cafes and snack bars serving delicious breakfasts, coffees, ice creams and more. In the evenings, tavernas along the seafront offer plenty of dining options with stunning sunset views. Opposite Parakia, you'll find the beaches of Krios and Marcello. Though accessible by a regular boat service for eight euros return, it's a pleasant 20 to 30 minute walk around the bay, taking you past the main town beach along the way and offering some impressive views back across towards the island's capital. Krios Beach is accessed via a small dirt track that begins at the northernmost end of Parakia Beach and takes you up and across a small rocky headland. Marcello extends from the far end of Krios Beach, both offering soft golden sand and calm, shallow water. Our first day trip from Parakia was a visit to the beach resorts of Logaros, Punda and Levadi. Located on the eastern coastline of Paros, these resorts are easily accessible by local bus and take about 30 minutes from Parakia. Some buses travel around the coastline via Neusa, while others stop at the inland village of Lefkes. We chose to disembark at Logaros, the largest of the three beaches. Here you'll find plenty of sunbeds, with a few tavernas and cafes close by. The sea was calm during our visit with soft golden sand and shallow water for swimming. If you want to avoid the cost of sunbed hire or just fancy a bit more space, 
head towards the south end of the beach, which is wider and free of umbrellas. Punda Beach is an easy five minute walk from the south end of Lagaras. Here you'll find an even more impressive stretch of soft sand with crystal clear water. Two beach clubs, Viva Punda and Punda Beach, occupy the entire area behind the sand, offering food and drink with lively music and plenty of sun lounges, perfect for topping up your town. This is one of the nicest beaches on the island and well worth visiting during your stay. Its proximity to Lagaras and Livadi means you'll have access to three great resorts with lots of options for food and drink, all with an easy walking distance. After visiting Punda, we retraced our steps north past Lagaras and continued along the coastal road to the main resort of Piso Livadi. Here you'll find a wider selection of cafes and tavernas, plus some accommodation options if you prefer a quieter base outside of the more popular resorts. The beach here is smaller than Lagaras and Punda, but it's still a nice sandy spot and the sea is just as clear. Aliki is a popular beach resort on the southwest coast of Paros. A local bus service offers regular connections from Parakia, taking between 20 and 30 minutes, as sometimes the bus stops at Paros Airport on the way. The main beach is a small triangle of sand with plenty of cafes and tavernas, mostly along the eastern side heading south towards the small harbour area. The real treat here, however, is the much larger beach of Piso Aliki. A short walk south of the main resort, Piso Aliki is yet another fabulous expanse of warm sand situated in a wide south-facing bay. The lack of sunbeds may put some visitors off, but for us, the freedom to throw down a towel and make a piece of this beach your own elevates it above everything we've seen so far. The sea is shallow and calm, making it ideal for swimming, and there is some natural shade from a few trees, although these do get occupied quickly, so arrive early if you plan to spend the day and don't have your own umbrella. A short walk northwest of Aliki, you'll also find a third beach, Agios Nicolaias. Slightly stony at the eastern end, the beach improves as you walk further west, becoming yet another fine place to sunbathe and swim in the beautiful waters of the Aegean Sea. Paros certainly has no shortage of fantastic beaches, and there's plenty more still to come. No trip to Paros would be complete without a visit to the popular resort of Naosa. After Parakia, it's the second most popular place to stay on the island. Filled with boutique accommodation, fantastic restaurants, and tons of great little shops down its narrow winding streets. The bus service from Parakia runs every 20 to 30 minutes until late in the evening during peak season, meaning it's easy to get to even if you aren't staying nearby. We visited late in the afternoon and had a fantastic time exploring the main harbour area. There are so many tavernas to choose from, you could stay here for a fortnight and dine somewhere different every night. We dined at Carino right on the harbour front. The food was fantastic, with delicious Greek pasta and amazing fresh fish, combined with some epic sunset views to round off a fabulous day in paradise. If you're staying in Nausa, there are some fantastic beaches nearby, accessible via a regular boat service, or, as we did, by hiring a quad bike and making your own way around. Lagari is a long sandy beach occupying most of the large bay opposite Naosa. 
There are no sun lounges here and apparently it's a popular nudist spot, but if you like getting back to nature then it could be worth checking out. Further north from Lagari is a small beach called Dionysos. Accessible via a sandy track through some natural terrain, this secluded beach offers stunning views across the bay back towards Naosa. I spotted Siparos Beach while heading back towards Naosa from Lagari. Despite backing onto the road and being fairly small, it was such a stunning spot that I had to stop and check it out. The sea here is warm and shallow, perfect for a refreshing afternoon dip. Monasteri is a popular beach destination, also located in a bay opposite Nosa, this time around the western coastline. With upbeat music, comfy sun lounges and clear, calm water, it's a top destination for those seeking a cool hangout with family or friends. Our final stop of the day was a small stretch of sand just north of Kalamia Beach. The sea is a little rocky and you'll need to bring your own shade, but it's a quieter option worth checking out. Golden Beach, or Chrysiakti as it's known in Greek, is a large sandy beach in a quiet spot on the southeast coast of Paros. About 50 minutes by bus from Parakia, it's a longer journey than the resorts we've visited already, but as soon as you step onto the sand, you'll realise it was worth the effort. With so many great beaches fighting for the top spot, Golden Beach comes very close to edging them all and stealing all the glory. The sheer size and quality of the sand and sea make it really hard to beat. The only criticism we could make is the lack of dining options. We only counted three beach bar restaurants with fairly limited menus. However, the food at Rebel Beach Bar was delicious, if a little pricey. Unlike some other resorts, there's also not much around apart from the beach itself, so you'll need to get back on the bus or bring your own transportation if you want to see more of the area. No visit to Paros would be complete without popping across to its smaller neighbour Antiparos. This little island is almost an extension of Paros, but with a more low-key, relaxed atmosphere. The islands are so close that you can travel between them by boat in under 10 minutes. A small vehicle ferry links Antiparos to the west coast resort of Punta. In high season, these boats depart every 20 to 30 minutes during the day. Foot passenger tickets cost €1.50 each way and the bus from Parakia to Punta is €1.80 for a total return cost of €6.60. There is also a direct ferry service between Parakia and Antiparos. It is passenger only, costs €5 Euros each way and takes 30 minutes. The service is less frequent with only 5 crossings per day in peak season, so we'd recommend going via Punta as it's slightly cheaper, is more regular and takes a similar amount of time. From Antiparos town you can explore the many shops, cafes and tavernas located in the main village or walk to a couple of small beaches to the north of the island. On a second visit to Antiparos we hired e-bikes from the main town and found them to be a convenient and eco-friendly way of exploring the island. It's only 12 kilometers to the southwesternmost resort of Agios Georgios where you'll find a smattering of accommodation, a couple of small tavernas and a slightly disappointing shingle beach with quite a rocky shoreline. On our way back north, we found a slightly better, though still coarse sand beach at Soros, and the best beach of the day at Glifa, further up the eastern coastline. None of these compared favorably with the beaches on Paros though, but it's still worth visiting the island to experience its more peaceful surroundings and great restaurants. To sum up our trip, we found Paros to be everything it promised and more. Great food, boutique shops, a vibrant atmosphere and, best of all, an abundance of amazing beaches.
though its popularity continues to explode, pushing up prices and putting a squeeze on accommodation, this is a reflection of its well-deserved status as one of the top Greek islands. We're so glad we spent a full two weeks here, getting to try out a wide variety of restaurants and revisit our favourite beach resort. On that note, here are our top three beaches. Piso Aliki for its simplicity, amazing calm water and convenient location. Golden Beach, a breathtaking expanse of golden sand and crystal clear sea. Siparos Beach, an unexpected gem hidden in plain sight. We'd also recommend trying out the following restaurants in Parakia. Coro Rosso, superb fresh pizza tucked away in a quiet setting. Philoxenia, a tasty mix of Italian and Greek food with an idyllic beachfront setting. Onar Cafe, for cheap and tasty snacks just a stone's throw from Parakia Beach. Ragusis Bakery, Fresh baked goods and delicious coffee, an easy walk from the main harbour and bus station. Finally, for accommodation in Parakia, we chose to stay at Oasis Hotel. It's right opposite the port, making it an ideal base if you're travelling by ferry. The rooms are well furnished, the staff are fantastic, and it has its own restaurant and cafe serving great coffee and excellent food. We hope you've enjoyed this video and that it's left you excited to plan your next Greek vacation. Please leave a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. You can also check out our website www.greecetravelguide.co.uk for more in-depth content based on over 30 years of travelling around this amazing country.